The biggest iPad Pro change since the 2018 model is coming this month maybe even as soon as in the next few days. And there are a ton of upgrades to expect. So welcome to our final leaks and rumors covering everything new about the 2024 iPad Pro, from the design to the display all the way down to its price. And I'll get into all of this right after our sponsor, Paperlike. Paperlike's 2.1 screen protector is the ultimate screen protector for artists and note takers. Using microbead nano dot technology, Paperlike gives you greater stylus resistance and therefore makes writing or drawing on your iPad feel like real paper, while still providing you with great clarity and protection. Check out Paperlike and more of their accessories by using the link below. So let's start off with the new design. You see, ever since the 2018 iPad Pro, which was a huge design departure from the 2017 model, we haven't really had any design changes at all. Unless, of course, you count the camera module change on the back of the 2020 model. Well, with the 2024 model, we are expecting five design changes. The first being a thinner design. According to some recently leaked schematics, both models are getting significantly thinner. The 11 inch, which is already crazy thin at just 5.9 millimeters, is getting even thinner to 5.1 that is a 13.5% reduction, while the 12.9 inch is going from 6.4 to an even thinner 5 millimeter body, which is a 21.8% reduction. Now, these are some pretty significant thickness decreases, even more so on the 12.9 inch model. Personally, I never thought that the current iPad Pros were thick. In fact, they were one of the thinnest tablets on the market, but now they are literally the thinnest flagship tablets thinner than the 5.5mm Samsung Tab S9 Ultra. And I'm pretty sure that with this reduction in thickness, we'll also get a reduction in weight, which is the second design change. This wasn't an issue on the 11 inch model, but on the 12.9, if you also had a Magic Keyboard attached to it, it would actually be heavier than a MacBook Air, which may not be the case anymore with this new version. The third design change is the size. The 11 inch is getting taller by about 2 millimeters, while also getting narrower by 1 millimeter, while the 12.9 is getting taller by close to 1 and then wider by 0.6. I should also mention that the 12.9 inch is apparently increasing its display size slightly to 13 inches. The fourth design change is Face ID, which, as I mentioned in our previous videos, is apparently switching from a portrait orientation to a landscape one together with the front-facing camera. We've seen this first with a 10th generation regular iPad, and this does make a lot of sense, as when you were using the current iPad Pro in landscape mode with the keyboard attached, and you were also in a video call, the angle would just be very off, as the camera was essentially on the left side bezel. Now, this would be fixed for landscape users. And finally, the fifth design change is MagSafe. We've been hearing about this since 2021, that Apple was considering adding wireless charging to the iPad Pro, and a new report from December seems to claim this exact same thing, that MagSafe will be coming to the new iPad Pros. Personally, I'm not that excited about charging via MagSafe. I am, however, way more excited about the type of accessories that we'll get thanks to MagSafe. For example, we'll now be able to easily mount our iPads in our cars and use navigation that way, which is great. We'll also be able to use docks like this 3-in-1 uh, dock from Belkin with the iPads too, of course a revised version. So yeah, I'm generally hyped to see what sort of MagSafe iPad accessories third-party manufacturers will come up with. Now, to allow for MagSafe to work, the back of the iPad will need to see some changes too, as wireless charging just doesn't work through metal. Now, some of the original reports from 2021 were pointing towards a glass back. Personally, I just don't see that happening as glass is number one, too fragile, and number two, it would also make the iPad way heavier. So if anything, I do expect Apple to essentially revise the Apple logo so that that is made out of glass and a bit bigger, which will allow for MagSafe charging to still work. Now, as a bonus change, I also expect to see a new color maybe black to match the new MacBook Pros, although this one has not been leaked and this is literally just my prediction and desire. Which brings us to the display, which is really the main upgrade of this iPad Pro generation. As you may have seen from the leaks, the iPad Pros will now be getting an OLED display, a huge upgrade from the LCD that we've had on the 11-inch model and the mini LED display that we've had on the M1 and the M2 12.9-inch models. Now, this is a massive upgrade, especially for 11-inch iPad Pro users. Like, there were so many times when I wanted to watch a movie on my 11-inch iPad Pro, but I just ended up using my mini LED 14-inch Mago Pro instead, as the black levels were so much better and, well, the brightness was also significantly better on the MacBook Pro. 
But now, these new iPad Pros will have an even better display than the MacBook Pros. Both models are said to be using Apple's stacked OLED display technology, so we should see much higher brightness levels than the 400 or so nits that we usually see on OLED tablets today. And if anything, they should be close, if not even identical, to the 1600 nit of brightness on the MacBook Pros. According to the Alec, Samsung will be exclusively manufacturing the displays for the 11-inch model, while LG will be manufacturing the displays for the 13-inch model, with both already being in full production. And even though we did have a lot of leaks on some larger iPad Pro models, a 14-inch and even a 16-inch, we haven't had any leaks on them at all recently. So the 11-inch and the 13-inch sizes are the only ones that we'll get. Now, you may have noticed that Apple has already started dropping a number of new products this week. And to celebrate Apple's March releases, we're introducing our Apple Array wallpapers pack by our designer, Ane. This was inspired by Marquez's Icons wallpaper, which I was a big fan of. And with Apple Array, we wanted to focus just on Apple. So we have dozens of unique Apple icons here of different products, from multiple generations of Apple Watches, to iPhones, to AirPods, Macs, and even some of the original iPods. All of these icons were made by hand by Hunane, which literally took her months to make. So a lot of work went into these. Apple Array comes in 10 iconic colors, from black to white to green, blue, purple, red, pink, orange, teal, which is, by the way, my favorite, actually, and then also a unique rainbow colors in the exact same colors as the original Apple logo. You can find Apple Ray in our app wallpapers for iOS and Android. Now, aside from the new design and the big new display upgrade, we're also set to be getting some fresh new accessories with this iPad Pro refresh. The first one being a brand new Apple Pencil that will be a direct follow-up to Apple's second-gen Pencil released in 2018 alongside the previous iPad Pro redesign. And there were a couple of changes rumored here. One was some magnetic tips, which I do see happening. I think that it would be great to have some easily replaceable tips with different textures and different hardness levels. And the other change was rumored to be a real-world color picker. Apple does have a patent on this, which I've talked about before, and the idea is that you can just touch any real-world object with the Apple Pencil, and it would not just sample its color, but its texture too. These upgrades definitely sound interesting, but for me, I, I just want to see a black version. And then we have the new Magic Keyboard. This one's said to be getting an aluminum top from the current silicone top to make it look more of like a MacBook when you're using it. However, the palm rest is still said to be made out of silicone. And the trackpad is also said to be getting bigger, which I did find a bit too small, especially on the 11-inch keyboard, which means that Apple will likely have to rebalance the entire hinge in order to push the iPad backwards and make room for this larger trackpad. I do like the idea of Apple making these changes to the keyboard. However, what I personally want to see is number one, function keys, which we don't really have at all on the current version. And number two, a reduction in weight as the current keyboard is especially heavy, especially the 12.9 inch version. Of course, since Apple is making this out of metal, it should be heavier, if anything. But the iPad itself is getting thinner, hence lighter, which should hopefully cancel out any potential weight increase. And this brings us to the fourth upgrade, which is the performance. Currently, we have the M2 chip, which is said to be upgraded to the new M3. Now, based on numbers alone, we should get about 15% faster CPU performance than the M2 model, uh, with 30% faster performance in low performance mode, thanks to the faster efficiency cores, and a 15% faster GPU. Of course, it's an iPad, so you probably won't really notice any of these improvements. You might notice ray tracing, which also is something new to the M2 chip, and this may come in handy if you tend to play games on your iPad a lot, and those games also happen to support ray tracing. Now, the M3 chip is also a more power-efficient chip compared to the M2, as it is based on a smaller 3 nanometer manufacturing process compared to 5. However, Apple did just update the MacBook Air with the M3 chip as well, and surprisingly, its battery life is exactly the same as the previous M2 model. So even though I would love to see Apple improve their 10-hour battery life rating on the iPad Pros, which is literally what we've had ever since the first-gen iPad, it doesn't seem like this will be changing with this generation. Something that might be changing, though, is the camera. Even though this hasn't been leaked at all, we've literally had the same main camera sensor since the 2018 iPad Pro. So I do predict this getting upgraded with this generation. And if anything, I would actually expect Apple to use the same sensor as we have inside the iPhone 15s, allowing you to take 48 megapixel photos on the iPad Pro, as well as the ability to shoot spatial video. There was a leak on the storage though, which now may go up to four terabytes. Now, personally, I don't think this is going to be the case, 
mostly because both the M3 MacBook Pro and the M3 MacBook Air they top out at two terabytes. Now, of course, the SSD modules are not built into the SOC, so Apple could just put whatever amount they want there. But as the M3 MacBook Pro doesn't support it, which is arguably a more prosumer focused machine than the M3 iPad Pro, I'll be surprised if the iPad Pro does support it. And lastly, we have the price. As you probably know, there were so many leaks and rumors on the price being significantly increased on these new iPad Pro models, even double to what they currently are now. However, some more recent reports have only stated about a $160 price increase, which would likely bring the total price to $949 for the 11-inch and $1249 for the 13-inch. Still very expensive, especially if you plan on buying a keyboard, but hey, you are getting a ton of extras compared to a MacBook Air, such as an OLED display that's also brighter, uh, that's also a touchscreen, you're getting Face ID, better speakers, pencil support, and more. But yeah, what do you guys think about all these upgrades that this new iPad Pro generation is getting? And definitely subscribe to the channel as we will have a number of videos out as soon as this iPad Pro releases. I'm Daniel, this means Zone of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.